poof, that was a great deal. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Start for that weekly mod collection demo shop update. Were we back to our normal upload times this week? Unfortunately not. The mod collection was about an hour late, and the demo shop was about an hour and a half behind our usual schedule. Either way, we've got some cool ones, starting off with Basket Case Sparkle 57 Les Paul. This thing's pretty cool and non-traditional, because typically a 57 would have humbuckers, but this has dual P90s, so it's more so like a 56. But you've got the whole basket weave design going on here in blue and silver sparkle, with what appears to be chrome pickup covers too. Our see-through knobs just completely blend in. And then we've got that historically super ultra low Gibson logo. But wow, that looks really strange with Grovers on it, since we normally see Clusons. And oh, is that a new Gibson branded locking Grover tuner? Looks like this one was installed a little bit askew. But your eyes were not deceiving you. The back is natural, whereas the top is super crazy. Our next one had the same price tag, but advertised as Satin Desert Burst. Which, looking at it, okay, that seems to follow suit. We don't have any pickup covers, Baraka nickel hardware, black top hat style knobs. But take a look at the inlays on the fretboard. They're abalone. I was curious if the headstock would be matching, but no, it's just a regular mother of pearl up here. But you've got the black tip Clusen Deluxe Tuners, this one DS Serial 106. And it's just a dark back, that's all that's interesting about this one. No, 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 wait a minute, look, this was a custom on the front, but a standard on the back. You do not have the back binding, which is a bit unusual, you'd think they would have made this like an access custom at this point. That makes me think maybe this was a made to measure, but our next metallic rose dust has some interesting inlays as well. It was about 200 bucks cheaper at 57.99. It reminds me of the custom lights of the late 80s. They had a sunset metallic finish that's in a similar vein. However, this one appears to have maybe a little bit more glitter sparkle to it, but then everything else is blacked out. And you guys know me, I love my one pickup Les Paul Customs. There's just something to them. But this one utilizes a master volume and master tone and super 400 inlays in what appears to be a glossy refinish. And cool, it has the matching back. However, interesting choice of the Moto backplate when everything else was blacked out. But if you need things a bit more spicy, here's El Picante at 1800. That's a really boisterous finish. They threw on the gold hardware just for good measure. You've got your victory on it. That's looking really fancy. And then you get to your fretboard and it's just dot inlays, no binding. But this appears to be one of the modern light guitars, but they fancified the headstock with a similar design with painted on gold binding. And sure enough, they went crazy on the back too. Continuation of the V design, the red sparklies, and then super ultra multi-layered stinger. I mean, to be fair, for a $300 premium, <laughs> you might as well get one that's crazy like that. I wasn't a fan at first, but now, yeah, I'm okay with it. Because look, they even threw custom buckers in there. That was a deal. But now we've got the interestingly named Perpluberry. Satin Perpluberry at $42.99. So I would imagine this has a slight color shift to it. You can kind of see some of the purple there and then the rest is very blueberry-esque. However, since it's kind of the aniline dyed style, it does look like this would pop in person. But then we've got our zebra bobbin pickups, a regular style headstock with a matching back. But how about at 3300, the Fire Gold Burst 60 standard? Just reminds me of a tri-burst, except for this time we got a moto pick guard, reflector knobs with an oddly put pointer. I think that one slipped through the cracks. It should be up there. <laughs> but our headstock, pretty basic, and just a regular red back. However, we've got some decent figuring. Now we've got some sort of a walnut finished $2,300 SG standard. It appears to be satin. You've got a lot of streaks in the grain, so it works with this color, but it's really the pick guard that's taken over the show right here to make it different. And they matched the knobs to that, gave it all uncovered stuff, black pickups, but they modified our tuner tips, and the back is just a little bit more of the same. Very cool wood grain on that body. I can see why they chose to redo this one. <laughs> hey, look, it's the continuation of the V pattern from that spicy one we were just talking about, except for this time it's natural. And along similar veins, we got Honey Butter Burst. I like the name, not as big of a fan of the result. However, what is cool, look at the pick guard. This looks like how they make the ES295 pick guards because the top is clear acrylic, but then you're seeing the color that's on the bottom side of it portray through it. I'm surprised they didn't do a little design on it, but otherwise it's, it's just kind of a brownish red burst with a solid colored back, offered at 2300. But here's a Custom Shop Junior in cotton candy satin with a pretty proud price tag of four grand. So usually when we see this finish come through the mod collection, it's because it started life as aniline dyed cherry, but something went wrong. They sanded it down. It's still within a lot of the wood grain. They just spray over top of it once they get the most of it that they can. And then you kind of get this effect. 
In the past, it hasn't really sold that well, but some look better than others. But at the same time, they omitted the pick card. And you've got more of the same on the back. Oof, they downgraded your case to Gibson USA from Custom Shop. Let's just say, I won't be surprised if that one's still sitting there in two months. But how about Royal Mystique SG Standard 2700? I like this one. It's a little bit of silver and teal mixed together. Maybe slate blue would be a good way to put it. And it appears to be a complete gloss refinish, so hey, can't complain there. So I'd say that was a pretty decent week this time. There's only three left from this week's new offerings. Looks like the mod collection might have cleared shop because we only have four of like the really old ones too. But now the UK mod collection. Not gonna lie, pretty solid offerings this week. I especially like smoked tobacco flame here. 5,500 euro is very pricey for one of these. I hope to one day document a cool color version because I just think it's fascinating because A, you get triple binding on the front, which you don't find in solid body electrics as often as like the semi hollows. These get the figure tops and upgraded to humbuckers from P90s and you get the binding on your fretboard. But this color works very well with that ultra dark border. But it looks like maybe this one made it to the mod collection because of an askew silk screen. Or at least we still have the custom shop case. Next one was called Starfish Sparkle for 3,200 euro. So at first just kind of looks like a pale red, but then you get it in the light and you get to see all the glitter sparkle flakes in it. But the big question, did they do the back? Yeah, I think it's safe to say they did the back. <laughs> that's almost a little bit too sparkling over the top, but maybe that's just how the lights hit in the neck. I was curious if they did the headstock in. I can't quite tell. It looks like maybe a little bit, but that could also just be dust. That's definitely one for the sparkle lovers. But check out this sinister left-handed modern studio. I didn't even know they were making those lefty. They called it two-tone chrome. I'm sorry, UK mod collection. That is not a modern studio. It doesn't have the black binding and it doesn't have the ebony fretboard. So this is something else. But I like the fact that they've painted on this black binding appearance here. And two-tone, you normally think like black white, but this time it's more of like a silvery white. This headstock's all crazy looking to a right-handed guitar player. But as we move on from the front, keep going through their photos, it looks like we're just rocking a straight up black back. But we do have a stinger designed in silver on the back. Then here's a cool 80s Explorer, Teal Koi Satin. That would look fantastic on an Explorer Custom with binding around it, an ebony fretboard, mother of pearl block inlays. This was the only one of the five that sold this week at 2,700 euro. And then we can round up the mod collections with a Dark Hour Sparkle 335. This finish vaguely reminds me of the Moonless Night Last Paul Custom, where it's just black with some silver sparkles. But then they threw a Bigsby B5 on it for some reason. That looks so strange on a semi-hollow. But hey, sure enough, full gloss free fin, front and back. You won't hear complaints from me. It was offered at a little under 3,100 euro. But now the USA Demo Shop. I was gutted when I saw this. They had a prototype this week, a Gibson SGHP Blood Orange Fade. I know the Les Pauls came in this color, but I don't think the SGs did. It's either that or they didn't come in this exact same hue. But when I got to the back, sure enough, it's one of those Apex head carved guitars. And I kind of collect these. I have the Les Paul version. And sure enough, it was marked a prototype. I don't know what possessed them to price it so cheap. That was a fan. Fantastic deal. Like, I'm sure they could have posted that for three grand and it would have sold just as fast. Even came in one of those cool anniversary cases. But there was also an RO, a Hummingbird Standard, a regular Ebony Custom, another one of those, more expensive, one of the modern Supremes, an adjustable saddle J45. That's kind of fascinating. One of the older Les Paul Studios, a 345, 57 V3 neck. Wow, that's fascinating. Because that's the slimmest of the offerings, it's just like a 1960 reissue. And typically the 57 gold top is one of the thickest, biggest baseball bats that you can buy. So if you've always wanted a gold top 57 reissue, but you couldn't jive with the neck profile, that could be a good option for you. That's why they have that one priced a little high. That one's got an interesting eye formation in the back of the wood grain. If you don't care about the skinny neck, you could save yourself 800 bucks on this double gold VOS regular one. But they slightly modified this 335 satin with an uncovered bridge pickup. This is a really, really plain looking factory burst. Pretty cool looking Cobra burst double cut. And then we can hop over to the UK side of things where they had a 64 SG standard. A lefty 335 figured. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I, I sure don't see any figuring here. If I, if I bought a figured model and this is what shows up, I'd surely send it back as well. Kind of a cool classic white 63 SG special. 
vintage wraparound tailpiece and all. Some decent wood grain on this Les Paul tribute. I wish they would bring tributes back in this format with the P90 pickups, have them be 1200 or less brand new. These things were just so good. And lastly, the European demo shop. Grey Star presents with a white custom, a black custom, regular 60 standard, rather interesting one. Let's take a closer look at this. That is a lot of mineral streakage. Now, normally you, you'd probably look at that and be like, bleh. But some guys actually go to the custom shop to get more mineral streaks like that. So, you know, for a Gibson USA product, that one's got character. I do like it, even if it's not traditional. But hey, look, you even get some figuring in the mahogany body. Dare I say it, that could be a buy for someone. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed the recap this week. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.